Hi guys, welcome back. Or should I welcome myself back because I haven't made a video in quite a while. I'm going to be discussing the hard problem of consciousness. In other words, the origin of consciousness. So I will be breaking this video up into three videos. The link to the second video will be in the description box below. So let's go ahead and begin. Since the beginning of science and philosophical thought, people have sought to identify the biological mechanisms and the origin of consciousness. Historically, the study of consciousness can be broken down into two major problems. The easy problem of consciousness addresses uncovering the biological mechanisms arising from the conscious brain. For instance, neuroscientists can use a tool called electroencephalography, or EEG, to measure different frequency brain waves arising from various brain states, such as relaxed wakefulness, sleep, depth of anesthesia, etc. The second problem is known as the hard problem of consciousness. Where does consciousness come from, in other words? Questions involving the hard problem of consciousness include the following. Does the brain create the mind, or are the brain and mind separate entities that work together intimately? Does the mind consist of some entity that is not currently measurable according to our laws of science? Does the brain act as an antenna to this immeasurable entity? René Descartes, a famous French philosopher, mathematician, scientist, and founder of Cartesian dualism, or mind-body dualism, stated in his doctrine that humans are a union of mind and body, and that the mind was distinct from the body. Obviously, many neuroscientists disagree with this separation between the soul and the body, or the mind and the brain. Rather, most agree that the brain physically produces the mind. This widely held view is popular because of our modern advancements in neuroscience technology. We have tools now that can measure brain function and can map different aspects of our consciousness onto different brain regions. For instance, functional MRI can identify activation of different parts of the brain when a person is asked to think of or do something specific. Furthermore, brain pathologies such as strokes or epilepsy have demonstrated that death of or inactivation of brain cells in specific brain regions lead to focal neurological or behavioral deficits. For most neuroscientists, these observations lead to the conclusion that the brain creates the mind, that the brain creates consciousness. However, do these observations actually provide evidence that the brain creates consciousness? Do these observations disprove the hypothesis that the brain is a conduit of consciousness. Even if the brain was a conduit of consciousness and it didn't actually produce it, many scientists do not believe that this concept is scientifically measurable. Let's take a step back now and discuss how the brain works. The brain is obviously a very complicated system that converts physical phenomena into bioelectrical signals. External environmental stimuli, say photons from light, interact with receptors, for instance, photoreceptors on the retina, which are then turned into electrical action potentials that travel to neurons in the brain. The activated neurons then release neurochemicals that trigger action potentials in downstream neurons. How exactly these signals are transformed into conscious awareness is not exactly known, but it likely involves an integrated network of dynamic interactions between different brain regions. Which leads us to the topic of hierarchy. The major systems in our universe are primarily organized on hierarchy. What I mean by this is that each system is composed of fundamental layers that build upon each other and interact with each other to create complicated and dynamic networks. This hierarchical organization is seen all over the place in political, socio-cultural, economic, and biological systems. Each layer interacts with other layers at different spatial scales in top-down and bottom-up fashions. These interactions obviously create very complex and dynamic systems, and the outcomes of these systems are very difficult to predict because of their complexity. For instance, think of how 
difficult it is to predict human behavior or the behavior of the stock market. This is because of the complex nature of the hierarchical structures on which these systems are built. Now the brain also functions within a hierarchical system through complex interactions of neural layers at different spatial scales. Neurons, the basic building blocks of the brain, communicate with other neurons to form groups of small and large columns throughout the brain. Columns group together to form nodes and networks. Groups of nodes and networks form brain nuclei and major neural pathways, which in turn form brain lobes, which in turn form hemispheres. Where exactly within these scales do conscious processes lie? Or are they a global result of all of the interactions. That consciousness is a global result of all of these complex interactions seems like the most intuitive answer. However, there are certain aspects to consciousness, say the storage and retrieval of memory, whose details are still unknown. We know that long-term memory is likely stored through scattered regions of the brain that are likely involved in memory-related activity. For instance, the memory of a dance routine likely stored in the motor networks of the brain, such as the cerebellum, the basal ganglia, and or the motor cortex. We have also discovered cellular processes of memory, such as long-term potentiation, which essentially is a strengthening of connections between neurons based on recent patterns of activity. But we still don't understand the physical substrate of memory. In other words, where exactly is memory stored? Is it stored in specific neural networks? Is it stored within neurons or at the molecular or atomic scales? We still don't know this. While the concept of memory storage in small particles like molecules may sound absurd, science has already discovered that other kinds of memories such as immunological and genetic memory are stored at the molecular level. Think antibodies in immune cells or DNA. The lack of understanding about the, the specific substrates of neural phenomena such as memory or other aspects of consciousness does not in itself provide evidence that there is something beyond the physical brain that produces consciousness. However, it highlights the need to look into processes that are more detailed than even the neuron or even the molecule in order to potentially more fully understand consciousness. This concludes the first part of my hard problem of consciousness video. Stay tuned for my second video on the topic. Once it is available, the link will be provided in the description box below. Thanks guys for watching. Um, please give me feedback. Let me know if this is way too complicated or just bore, plain boring um, or if you'd like to learn more about consciousness, reality, and the brain. Thanks for your feedback and we'll catch you next time.